Hello and welcome to the beautiful Luslavica European Music Center for the first discussion during the Cypher Jazz Days 2021. The discussion will be in English, but let me uh, greet my guests in Polish. Paweł Brodowski w, uh, of Jazz Forum. Paweł, dzień dobry, witamy Cię. Dzień dobry, witamy Ciebie, Piotr. Tomasz Lach, son of Krzysztof Komeda and curator of his heritage. Tomku, witamy Cię serdecznie. Witam, dzień dobry. Leszek Żądło, an accomplished Polish flute and sax player, a legend of Polish jazz. Leszku, witamy Cię. Nawzajem też witam Was. Cieszę się, że Was widzę. Jesteśmy we wspaniałym towarzystwie. Musimy przejść na angielski dla naszych gości na całym świecie. From now we uh, take our panel in English. Uh, our subjects are, of course, Krzysztof Komeda Czciński and Zbigniew Zeifert. Uh, I think because Komeda is very much a 60s uh, topic and uh, Zeifert is very much a 70s topic, mostly, uh, we, I think we should start with Komeda and uh, we'll take questions and answers in turn, so not to interrupt each other uh, because of the technical difficulties. Uh, because Pavel is on my uh, left, he's number one, Tomas is number two, and Leszek is number three. So we'll take in turn, oh. but feel free to interrupt if necessary. Uh, oh. The first question is, when you first heard uh, Komeda music and what was your reaction, Pavel? Actually, I think I heard Komeda's music first in the movies. In the movies like uh, The Innocent Sorcerers by Andre Vaida, that was early 60s. I was a young boy, but I enjoyed this music very much. And I enjoyed the film. It was an adult film. It was uh, mm, uh, like a window to the West. And the music uh, was incredible. The story of the music was incredible. Uh, uh, the story of the film was incredible. So I took notice of, uh, of uh, Andrzej Vaida as, uh, as uh, director of the film and the great actors that were in the film, including uh, uh, Tadeusz Womnicki in the main role. And uh, I took notice of the music and then Knife in the Water. And that was... Uh, um, uh, it, it was a great experience. I remember to this day, the first time I heard them, I saw the movie and I heard the, the film, it stayed in my mind for the rest of my life. And then I saw the, mu the film many times. And each time uh, when I uh, watch Knife in the Water, it, seemed to, it seems to me like I'm watching it the first time. I enjoy it as much each time. And uh, the music in the film, Knife in the Water, was one of the protagonists, one of the actors. Um, the actors uh, who are, the music was moving, moving the action of the film. Sometimes it, it first came the music and then something happened in the film. So, uh, so that, that, that is really a masterpiece. And I think it's uh, Roman Polanski's greatest music and some of the greatest uh, music by, by Komeda. And then uh, I was a rock and roll musician at that time. That, that is one thing that uh, took much of my time. And I was very young and I would attend Jazz Jamboree only occasionally in the early 60s. And uh, Krzysztof Komeda was not much seen in Poland. He was already working mostly in the West. So it was very hard to see him. I never met Komeda. Uh, I wish I had met him, but I never met him. Then in the, six, the late 60s and early 70s, I got to know Zosia, his wife, and I became friends. And uh, the music of Komeda, the story of Komeda grew and grew and grew, and we were always finding something mysterious about his life about the tragic events in the Hollywood uh, Hills uh, when, when he died by, by accident. 
Um, it was a, an event that uh, it was like an earthquake for, for the jazz community. And I think jazz community lives with this, uh, with the, this, the legend, the myth of Komeda ever since. And as time goes by, the music is growing stronger and stronger and stronger. Thank you, Pavel. You actually answered my second question already. <laughs> Tomasz, it will be interesting to ask you when you were first aware, when you heard music of uh, Krzysztof. In your case, being an insider, that's an interesting one. Yeah. Uh, as a child, I mean, I, 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 first time I met Krzysztof, uh, Krzysztof uh, during first jazz festival in Sopot in 1956. As a five years old, I come there with my grandmother, mother of Zofia Komedowa. Then, uh, then uh, I'm afraid we uh, lost you for a second. Christoph's scenario, uh, uh, but after two years, uh, also with his music. Uh, then, growing, uh, I meet his music, uh, living close to them. Then, with 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 Zofia and Christoph in Warsaw. Uh, and that's all. I'm not a musician. I'm not. Uh, I'm just fun. That's sure. But but I'm not a musician. So his music it, it, uh, stays with me. I'm painter and photographer during painting, for example. Uh, uh, but I think it's it, 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 this connection between me and Christoph is so close. I can't say um, you know with 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 distance. Uh, uh, about about, about uh, quality uh, quality of his music. That's and that's and obvious. That's obvious, Tomasz. Thank you so much, Leszek. Yeah. Your your turn. When you first heard Komeda's uh, music and how uh, your reaction to his music changed over the years. It's hard to say when when was the f when the first time was because uh, um, I think the knife in the water I think I started to play saxophone in 1960 and started to join the party yeah the Krakow Jazz Club Helicon and met uh, all these all these musicians that time Komeda was living in Krakow and um, he gave concerts in the Philharmonie uh, in the music hall in Krakow. And this was that time that I consciously for the first time heard his music. Afterwards, when I started to play, uh, I organized the Polski Jazz Ensemble. This was the, during um, uh, uh, the Civil yeah. War, I would say, in, in Poland. And um, we had, um, uh, and we had in our <clears throat> um, repertoire, we had uh, um, his um, lullaby from Rosemary's Baby, and which is uh, now one of the most popular songs in Poland. And we always performed that. Um, it's hard to say uh, if, how uh, I, I heard him several times, and during the years, uh, of course, his uh, music became more and more mod modern. Um, my last record, Vignania Zerayu, um, um, this is his music. Mm -hmm. he, we discovered this music um, um, about 15 years ago in, his, uh, in Holland, and um, I, I rearranged um, um, this music for jazz quartet and uh, um, this became very nice record and we this performed it at the um, Jewish festival, singer festival in Warsaw and this recording, uh, live recording is now on the record. And this is uh, Christoph Komeda's music of course, we arranged our way, um, but it's very, very, very interesting. And this record was, I think, uh, since a couple of years, very popular. 
Um, what can I say more about Krzysztof Komeda? Of course, um, um, as a musician, um, uh, I was very impressed by his um, harmonical feeling, also rhythmical feelings, and um, his ideas, melody ideas. Um, I think he was one of the most, for me, uh, impressive uh, musicians, Polish musicians uh, um, that I know. Uh, this is a range of um, <clears throat> maybe musicians uh, like Bronisław uh, uh, Kaper, which was living since the 30s in, um, in Hollywood and make fantastic music, also film music. And I think um, uh, that um, Komeda was about this range of uh, composer. Thank you, Leszek. Uh, let's discuss what would make uh, a musician unique. I asked uh, about Komeda uh, Michał Urbaniak yesterday, because we've met, and he thinks that Komeda was always taking the risk, balancing on the edge, not playing it safe. He was extremely creative, and that's, in opinion of Michal, what makes him unique. He played with him and said that uh, that was a great lesson. Paweł, what's your opinion why Komeda was unique and great. It's uh, uh, the hardest uh, question to answer. Uh, what made him unique is uh, his personality, his uh, his uh, his strengths as an as an as an artist, his imagination, his own voice, as you said, his tone, his music was uh, recognizable instantly every time you know no, no matter who plays his music you can immediately recognize that this is komeda but especially the music from the 60s i remember when jerzy kosinski the great uh, polish american writer after many years in america came first time came back to poland 1989 for the 30th 20th anniversary of Oh, Krzysztof Komeda's departure it was a very special celebration. And he was asked upon his arrival at the airport, it was on television, it struck me very much. This, his answer was very, very, very short, but to the point. He said, Komeda's music is a, a, has a special atmosphere, something indefinable, but something that you remember from the old movies from the old chronicles of, of uh, that were preceding the Polish feature films in the cinemas that we would uh, uh, watch, you know, every time when you go to the cinema, you had this news program at the first time and Komeda's music mm -hmm. would be featured there. So there was a special atmosphere in this music and Komeda's music also uh, to me is like black and white photographs of Marek Karevich. It's a black and white music, it's like the fusion music of the 70s, like Pat Metheny, John McLaughlin. This is music, it's very colorful music, but music of the 60s is, uh, is uh, very intellectual. It's black and white, but with all kinds of shades, all kinds of uh, 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 grades of, of, uh, of, of, of shade and grayness and uh, it's very interesting, very intellectual. He had, he had a, Komedas uh, had a strong, uh, strong personality. He was introvert, very quiet. He was a man of few words. As uh, they say, the musicians, his, his friends would say, he, we, he, he hardly communicated with words. He never gave any instructions or hardly any instructions how to play, but by force of the music and of his personality, 
he directed his music and they played according to his wish somehow. Somehow it's like Miles Davis. It's very kind of uh, mysterious. It's uh, telepathic. It's uh, the, uh, the force, uh, the, uh, the, the, the waves that are going from the leader to the sideman. So somehow uh, he would communicate with his musicians through music and he let them play. And they played the, the, their own, in their own way but somehow adopting to his uh, overall uh, strategy of the music. So it, it was a music of freedom. It grew out of uh, very small uh, molecules of, uh, of uh, musical idea. It, the music grew into almost like symphony dimensions. He, he, he had long forms extended forms and his uh, compositions would almost like 30 music 30 minutes maybe even when they it was played live in concert it would last longer he was known for sitting at in the helicon club as leszek uh, leszek uh, Jondo just uh, mentioned he would seem to of sitting at the piano through the whole night just playing something and uh, there was a noise around him and uh, but nobody would dare disturb him. People were aware that something very special was happening when he was at the piano and trying his ideas for hours and hours. He just lived his music. Pavel, thank you very much for your very graphic answer. Thomas, I think I should ask you more about Cometa the man than the musician because there are so many opinions about him uh, being shy, being introvert, uh, being uh, enclosed in his own world. You were very close. Mm -hmm. So what he was uh, as a man? As Pavel told, uh, uh, from my point, from me as a member of family point of view, he was he was uh, uh, he was introvert, that, that for sure, but he was also one for us. Uh, he was uh, uh, he was caring about us, in in his way of of of, of behaving. I mean, he was uh, uh, he was uh, uh, after after jazz player and composer. He was also also doctor. You must remember about it. He know. Uh, uh, not showing uh, uh, emotions uh, uh, outside. He know what's going on. In, in, for example, in mind of in my mind, mind of of seven or ten years old uh, old boy. Yes. So he was very very careful with 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 uh, carrying me, uh, with with contacts with me and and also with Zofia, his wife, my mother. Uh, and and uh, answering your question. Uh, uh, from uh, uh, also from from my point of view as a painter, his music is special for me because from one uh, one side is is simple, is very simple. I mean melodies, this light motifs, yeah. So so uh, I can, as a non musician, I can remember this music, and when I'm working and listening to, to Commander's music, especially uh, especially his music played by by uh, Tom Stanko. Uh, uh, Comedas music. Uh, this is very colorful and full of meanings, full of, of colors, of impressions, uh, and this is really unique uh, in 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 Comedas music. Uh, Leszek, you are a musician, so your opinion will be uh, quite interesting here. What do you think make a musician unique, uh, different, uh, and in the case of Comeda? What uh, made him unique? And also as a person, uh, what are your observations, for example, from the Helicon Club? Yeah, uh, I grew up with all kinds of um, styles in my music, jazz styles, from the traditional until the free jazz and um, Charlie Parker, John Coltrane, and so forth. But um, always when I uh, play, um, um, music, uh, Comedas music, I feel different. 
That means that uh, his uh, approach to, uh, uh, to the, to the uh, harmonical um, uh, structures and uh, also rhythmical and the form structures is so unique, unique that I have to really, when I play his music, concentrate very much as it's very melodic, but unusual. It's um, something, something in this music which I uh, never heard playing like um, music by John Coltrane, Charlie Parker, whatever, all kinds of uh, other uh, musicians, Wayne Shorter, um, uh, this feeling. That means that Cometa had, had something, something, something else. And uh, each, every composition I played, um, for example, this uh, Exile from Paradise I uh, mentioned, um, uh, Vignani Zrayu. This was a musical. He wrote a ballet music to it. And uh, when we put it together for the jazz quartet, it became a wonderful suite uh, with a very, very, very um, uh, different touch, uh, let's say, musical uh, feelings. Um, um, uh, melodical, uh, rhythmical, uh, harmonical feelings. Um, uh, yeah, I think my colleagues already said, uh, Tomek and, and Pavel, uh, everything about it, and I'm exactly the same. I've, I mean the same. Um, Anyway, um, I'm performing this uh, music by Komeda. I'm going to perform the next time <clears throat> on a few festivals and uh, concerts. And uh, each time when I play that, people like it very much. Leszek, thank you. Uh, before we uh, discuss Zbigniew Zeifert, uh, let's uh, for a second concentrate on a question which is important in this period of 60s and 70s, and it's a, maybe a controversial thing, but what your opinion, starting with you, Leszek, uh, what is the importance of luck factor in making a career, in making it big? And in case of this period, 60s and 70s, how much uh, politics, geopolitics, and the Berlin Wall and the Iron Curtain and everything, uh, prevented uh, musicians from uh, really making a career. Because we have two examples here, Komeda and Seifert, who basically crushed the Berlin Wall. It was not important in their cases. Or am I right? Leszek, you're first. Um, yeah, I, you are right. Somehow um, uh, we were, uh, I mean, they were different. They uh, showed uh, um, some some kind of a way how to do, get out of these um, 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 structures, which were uh, which the communist uh, um, system tried to uh, involve us, and of course, and with this uh, classical um, way of thinking. Um, this is a long discussion uh, the, uh, about the role of jazz in the whole development, political even development. There are some books about it, um, how jazz influenced the politics. Um, and I think Zbigniew and uh, Krzysztof were um, one of the first important Poland, which we're trying to to make something um, to to do musically something else, uh, fight for the musical freedom. I would say, uh, like Thomas Steinko and other musicians, uh, Polish musicians at that time, which grew up in the sixties, like me. I left Poland in sixty six. And of course, I don't have so much um, connection of these times afterwards, but I 
uh, I had more connection with uh, Austrian, German, French, uh, Italian music at that time, and even uh, American music directly. But um, um, the Polish music at that time, this was really uh, something else in that all East Bloc. Um, the whole East Bloc was really like looking at us that we are uh, bringing something new. The friends which were playing in Russia, they said that people in Russia were screaming, seeing and hearing this music, which Polish musicians brought to Russia. I had the same feeling playing in some other Eastern countries like Slovakia or Czech or Hungary. Um, uh, we played really free music and people loved it. Leszek, we love the poster behind you on your wall by the way. Yeah. Uh, Pavel, your opinion about this 60s politics versus music and uh, making it big uh, factor of luck, what's your opinion on this? Well, already uh, we have go back to the 50s when, uh, when this music was uh, had to go underground. It was uh, music which is banned by authorities. It, it it had uh, because uh, uh, it was Western music, so by definition, it was uh, music, imperialist music, American music, and it was banned on radio, in the press, and concerts were not allowed. Uh, so uh, for jazz musicians, for young people in general, jazz was a music of freedom, and it was used as a weapon in the fight for freedom by some uh, uh, politicians and uh, people of power and visionalists and literary uh, people like Leopold Tillman, that was the 50s with support festivals, you know, that was, that was absolutely, the jazz was on the forefront of fighting for freedom and then came uh, serious music with Water, Warsaw, Warsaw Autumn and uh, literary movements and paintings and, and films, but jazz was first and all the cultural elite was, uh, uh, was um, uh, like surrounding, jazz musicians was right in the center. Now it's, uh, it's a little bit, uh, uh, a little bit different, but jazz was a metaphor and is a metaphor of freedom, politically and musically as well, because freedom in music means you are allowed to play what you want at any, any note, any single note played by a jazz musician is a, is a, is a, is a free decision. Nobody tells you what to play. You play yourself, but adapting to the uh, to the uh, wider structure and and uh, uh, being responsible to the leader and other ideas, but you are free to express yourself the the way you want. This is the basic idea of freedom in jazz. And in this part of the world, it was very very important. It was somehow uh, um, allowed to, uh, to 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 flourish because because. Uh, it, it did not have any semantic, directly semantic meaning. Hardly, you know, jazz musicians were singing American songs, songs of love. They didn't sing about political issues. They just played was instrumental music. And even people in power were very proud and they liked, they enjoyed jazz music, including, uh, for instance, um, uh, the guys, uh, the first secretary of uh, Moscow, a uh, Russian party, uh, Andropov, he had a big collection of jazz records, apparently, and he ordered a book of history in the Soviet Union to be written. So uh, these guys, were, you know, in, in the political power, they were interested in jazz. The, the same thing happened in, 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 in Poland. And there was an iron curtain which separated the world, but iron curtain had also a very special, specific meaning because people in the West were very curious what is happening beyond Iron Curtain. Now the Iron Curtain is gone 
and they are not that interested. The, the world is open, but who cares? You know, like uh, we, there are so the the musical market is so saturated by great talent in each country that there's as much as much music as you can hear. So it's also difficult today to break through. We thought Iron Curtain goes, goes down. down. Now, now it's, it's our turn to uh, to be famous. Somehow it's not happening. <laughs> Somehow these guys from the 50s and 60s had more influence on world music than musicians of today. This is a very interesting uh, phenomenon. And uh, the, the musicians from those times were very strong uh, intellectuals, very strong personalities. Uh, some of them are gone, some are still living. Komeda, Stanko, Namysłowski, Karolak, Ursula Dudziak, Leszek Żądło, who is sitting here. He left Poland early, but uh, is also a strong personality. You know, people like this are, uh, are spreading the idea of jazz. Uh, throughout the world, and Zbigniew Seifert was also one of them. Uh, sadly enough, he was gone too soon. Thank you, Pavel. That was a very, very interesting observation about uh, 60s versus today. Uh, Tomasz, are you with us? Because we lost the picture. I think we lost Tomasz for a while. Uh, and uh, we can understand that because uh, he's in the remotest part of Poland now, uh, on the peninsula hell. Uh, Leszek, your turn, uh, and now we discuss Zeifert. Uh, being a uh, sax player, could you, could you uh, explain uh, the phenomena of sax players being uh, uh, violent players as well? We have Zeifert and we have Urbaniak. They play sax and they play violin, and they are completely different instruments. What's behind it? Are you uh, playing violin as well? No, I don't. I never had violin in my hand. I mean, I had in my hands, but I never played it. Um, I think um, violin and saxophone. Um, it somehow is uh, close to each other somehow. Um, everybody says, especially um, uh, cello um, is a very instrument, uh, is uh, very close to the sound of saxophone. Um, maybe, uh, maybe, I've, I guess that um, playing violin and playing saxophone, um, both of them, Michal or, or uh, Zbigniew, they always were uh, trying to to um, perform the, I mean, to extend the John Coltrane's music. I mean, this is something which is um, very, I would say, technical, uh, very, very extended and very um yeah uh, difficult to play this kind of music and and violin um <laughs> somehow maybe because of the instrument it is uh, much easier to do it um it's hard to say why the violin players um, like uh, zbigniew and michal they change to saxophone um I think this, that has also something with blowing. They're missing the blowing, that is using the lungs. Um, but on the other side, they've changed. Um, they've changed uh, to back to, 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 to the violin. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I think they express themselves uh, finally in the violin uh, music. Uh, what's your opinion about uh, the uniqueness of Seifert's music? Because he very much had his own voice. Also, he started in the jazz world when violin wasn't that uh, popular instrument. Uh, late 60s, uh, early 70s, the violin just started to being recognized 
as an uh, important jazz instrument, right? May I excuse you for 10 seconds because yep. someone is knocking on my door. <laughs> <laughs> someone is having on he heaven's door. <laughs> okay. We now we can now yeah yeah okay I'm back okay I'm back. This is just my we could son, we could but... see a post okay. we could see the poster in uh, its glory for a second <laughs> uh, so again <laughs> so again uh, I, I'll just repeat my question what what do you think is the main uniqueness in Zyphert's music uh, because he uh, clearly had his own uh, voice and also. Uh, the late 60s, uh, early 70s, uh, violin w just started to be a, an important, recognized jazz instrument. Before that, it wasn't that popular, right? Um, of course, um, uh, uh, Giovannotti, let's say, yeah. But he played um, um, totally different music. Um, Stefan Grappelli. Speaking of Zypher, became Speaking of Seifert, it took the, the, the modern art of playing uh, the, the music, like John Coltrane, especially John Coltrane, the phrasings, the melodies on the approach, uh, how to behave with the music, uh, the modern kind. Uh, and speaking of Seifert, is like extensions of, uh, of um, John Coltrane's uh, thinking or life, musical life. I would say. Uh, Pavel, you, uh, yes. uh, as if I understand correctly, uh, because you mentioned Grappoli uh, before, the question is uh, before uh, Seifert or other uh, great violinist, uh, violin was more of a traditional instrument within a certain scope. And uh, simply speaking, uh, Seifert was one of the first musicians that make it a free jazz instrument, right? Yes, he was. Uh, uh, well, um, both uh, uh, Zbigniew uh, and Michael were trained to be classical virtuosos. They were educated musicians in, uh, at the very high level. They were uh, their parents wished they would become virtuosos, but because of jazz, they thought, well, uh, violin is a classical, you know, I would not fit with, nobody would want me with, with, with a violin in the band, and nobody would want to hear me, so I will play saxophone instead. Saxophone is a more expressive instrument than violin. But then came the electric power, so uh, with uh, electric, uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, gear, you uh, uh, violin became as expressive instrument as as any other, and uh, I think that the first to play uh, uh, violin in a modern way was Jean Luc Ponty, who also was originally a saxophone player. He also uh, 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 was. Uh, influenced by John Coltrane. So uh, uh, Michael, uh, Michal Urbaniak, I think part of the reason he took up violin was that he could not blow, you know, that uh, there were some health problems. So he switched to violin, but both of them, Zbigniew and Michael thought, well, it's a jazz, it's a very rare instrument. We would be noticed immediately as, uh, as uh, exponents of a rare classical instruments in jazz on the same uh, le level, you know, as, as any other. So that was uh, interesting. Of course, they were both under uh, heavy influence of John Coltrane, as it was mentioned. So they transposed Coltrane music to violin. It was not as easy, Big Def would tell this very clearly, it was not easy to transpose Coltrane's music into violin because of different tuning and fingering. This is a technical matter, but Zbigniew worked hard on that. And his music uh, reflected even more than 
Coltrane he reflected the the piano style of uh, the piano style of uh, McCoy Tyner, you know the 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 intervals of uh, fourths and fifths, uh, like what Joachim Kuhn took up in the Man of Light. That uh, that direction was uh, was taken by Seifert. He was uh, when he emigrated to the West, he found himself among free jazz musicians. Uh, like uh, Hans Kohler, Wolfgang Downer, Joachim Kuhn, and others. So he's he steered into that direction, but his music was much more uh, conventional in the Coltrane mood. And his most uh, uh, most characteristic album, reflective of his style, was Man of the Light. But he uh, did something nobody did before before him as a violin. He played a solo violin concert, and that solo violin record was uh, released to support him when he was, uh, that it was found out that he was uh, suffering of cancer, that musician's label uh, run by Volgan, Volgan Downer did this. And uh, in America, he was forced to play fusion music. He recorded an album called Zbigniew Zeichert for Capitol Records, and I think Zbyszek was not happy with it. He was much more happy with Passion, his final record, where he would use his uh, uh, arranging ideas and string orchestra and uh, his ideas uh, uh, bordering on uh, drawing from Szymanowski's music, you know, contemporary music, classical music. It was completely innovative and people in America were absolutely simply stunned here is a guy playing on violin, this incredible music, he's young, he's fresh of ideas, the world is, uh, you know, at his feet. And then it became even more, um, more dramatic when people realized that he is, uh, that he's suffering from, cans uh, from cancer and everybody wanted to help him. People were, came to him with their hearts open. Uh, so uh, so he, the the story of his life is uh, is uh, very dramatic, very dramatic and uh, in a way tragic, because he couldn't fulfill his dreams. He couldn't do what he was ready to do. He was just about to start something that uh, would flower, you know, and uh, we would just. Uh, who knows what Zbigniew would be doing because he was there in America, in the New York City, playing with the, uh, the top musicians uh, uh, from the time. You know, uh, John Schofield was there, Richie Bayrak was there, uh, John Abercrombie was there, Nana Vasconcelos was there, Ron Carter was in the string choir. You know, he was, uh, Dave Liebman was very near the, the situation. He was right there, you know, ready to for, ready to be. He was embraced by the uh, American, the New York jazz community. He was one of them. They were. He was proud to be playing with them, and they were very happy to be playing with him. Pavel, thank you very much. Uh, Leszek, I'll get back to you about Zeifert uh, in a minute, but we have uh, Thomas back with us. Uh, yes. Thomas, there is a question I wanted to ask before uh, about uh, Comeda when we were discussing politics and uh, uh, Iron Curtain and all that stuff. Uh, being an insider, yeah. you should know if, because everybody would go to Hollywood. If Hollywood calls you, you just go there. That's obvious for any musician. Uh, but uh, he was more or less free to travel in Europe and to the US. Do you know or what do you think about when he uh, decided to go to America? Uh, was it a, a life-changing decision? Was he going for good? Or uh, would he return if all the you know, uh, bad things would not happen? <laughs> Uh, absolute life life changing decision because he didn't uh, leave behind anything uh, except me and my mother Sofia. Uh, he know already 
when he go to to, to Hollywood, uh, he go there with his prof how to say professional passport. I mean passport. There was two kinds of passports, private one and, and professional one. And this professional one passport, uh, its value was two years. So he know uh, staying longer in Hollywood. Uh, uh, his passport going to spare. So, so he, 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 he must ask to, in, in, for example, uh, Polish consulate in, in Los Angeles to, to give him a new one, or he would like, uh, he, 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 have, uh, he take the decision to stay. And, and his decision was to stay. This, this was the reason of, of a throw be, be, between him and Zofia, because Zofia, uh, Zofia was dreaming to stay maybe not in Poland, in Europe, but in, in, in Europe, in, in this era, European culture era. But he, he fell in love with, 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 with Hollywood, let's say, and with, with this kind of life. And, and, and he take the decision to stay. So it was life changing for him, especially for him, life changing decision. Thank you, Tomasz. And that's answer one of our question. If in, in that period, politics, uh, would influence music. It would in that way that you, you either stay, you either stay or, or you're not. Leszek, and the last thing, your opinion about Zyfert. Uh, I uh, maybe not like to uh, uh, investigate that too much, but if you know Passion, which was more or less his testament, it was recorded a couple of months before his death, and he probably knew it would be his last one. Uh, when you listen to Passion, uh, what direction, in your opinion, would Seifert music uh, take? What uh, would he explore later on? Because he was obviously on kind of a trip into a completely different world. Uh hard to say. I mean, I've met him a few months before he died. Uh, he used to live in Munich for a couple of years, and we are very close friends, and we met each other many times. We even played together. Uh, shortly before he died, I invited him uh, to <clears throat> join my jazz quartet at that time, and we made a nice, beautiful recording in uh, Hamburg, the radio, um, him and uh, I invited him and uh, Ursula Dujak uh, to join the party. Um, uh, and he, he, I think he, he was looking at that time to get more and more freedom from from the tones, from from the the music uh, to open up. I mean, John Coltrane, okay, but John Coltrane made also the trip. From from uh, from the bebop music to a very free and open mind, and I think Zbigniew was in the same way to do this. I mean, he didn't play totally free, but he played the the conventional music very free. Um, maybe this is just the opposite of what I say, but. Um, mm, I think in, until now, when he will be alive now, he'll be a totally different, different uh, musician. Um, because he made a very big jump. We met each other when I was 15 or something like that. And he was also very, you know, he, even younger. And we met in Krakow and we played really traditional music. Um, uh, and he suddenly made a big jump to a really open modern music. I think this is because of uh, John Coltrane. That's what, what, what I am thinking. And uh, we were both uh, on this trip suddenly. Paweł Brodowski, Leszek Zondło, Tomasz Lach. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us for the first of Cometa Seifert uh, panels for the Seifert Just Days. Uh, and for everybody watching us, uh, wherever in the world, join us tomorrow 
at 5 p.m. Paweł, Leszek, Tomasz, dziękujemy. Dziękujemy. Thank you very much. Dziękuję, thank you very much. See you next thank time. You. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>